Greetings! This is Winnie Riggle and welcome back to Minecraft 1.15.1. We are in the Buzzy Bees update and I believe this is episode 4. We have kind of a smorgasbord today for the agenda. I'm going to show you what I've done while you were away since last week. It's the beautiful hanging bridge below us. Um, we're going to clean up a little bit after that since I just finished all that construction and left all my scaffolding and the terribly unattractive dirt bridge behind me needs to come down. Uh, the way I ended up orienting the bridge meant that I had to remove the scaffolding I'd set up for our workshop and kitchen area. So we're going to redo that. I'm going to talk a little bit about planning as well because we will also do the planning for the main base area up on the hill behind me. We'll do a little bit of decorating of the path that I made to come down here to the animal area. And then I thought we might have some fun with bees and make uh, a honey farm slash learn how to make our own beehive instead of the bees nest. So we'll be harvesting a honeycomb from our bees nests up top. And then last but not least on the agenda, for today, in preparation for a very focused building episode next time on the main base, I think the chaotic crazy of these stacks of chests here is I'm I'm done. I'm I'm done with not being organized. So we are gonna take advantage of the little hill here, and I'm gonna build just a very small uh, starter workshop or organizational area into the side of this hill right next to where our sleeping area is because I can't find anything because we need to make a blast furnace and we need the cutting stones and all the things. So let me give me a second to get my inventory organized and we'll get started. Okay, first up in our decorating and cleanup plan, we're going to make use of some of the pumpkins that I've been growing and we're going to make jack-o'-lanterns uh, to light up this path. It's very easy to do. Set down our pumpkins because in order to make a jack-o'-lantern, first you have to shear a pumpkin into a pumpkin with a pumpkin face with a pair of shears. So we'll shear all that. It also gives us pumpkin seeds, which are great in our composter. We're making bone meal and or growing a plethora more pumpkins. We're gonna pick them up with our ax. Ax is the best tool for pumpkins and melons. Da -da. Uh, I did make diamond tools last time in case that was unclear because there was so much harvesting to do. And then you simply take the carved pumpkin and put it in a crafting table with a torch and boom, we get jack-o'-lanterns. These are not the most attractive things on the planet, but they make great lighting in things like paths, gardens, and farms, especially if you want to conserve your glowstone. So I think I've made some placeholders here for a couple of them, maybe. Oh yeah, here we go. So, and if we put them sideways, we don't have to look at their silly faces. And a little touch of orange in the path isn't bad. Uh, the best part is they give off the same light as a block of glowstone. So it's really good lighting for pathways. And I think let's maybe tuck another one right here and potentially back in this little cubby hole. Yeah, there we go. And then maybe we can stick one, oh, I don't know. We can get some more bushes. And kind of camouflage that a little bit. Never underestimate the importance of collecting leaves when you're cutting down trees. I tend to always have a pair of shears on me. Not only does it making cut make cutting down the big trees easier, uh, they come in very handy as bushes in decorating. So there, we have some beautiful bushes instead of torch spam everywhere. And I think that's ah, pretty good. I might tuck a few more here and there. Uh, like maybe let's stick one right here. Uh, no face, please. Thank you. Hide it with a little bush. And then we take that torch down. And we probably want one back over here. 
And in this case, I'll put that piece of dirt back. And that one's already tucked in behind a bush. Okay. And then this area will be, I'll kind of dig this a little bit back into the hill, not more than in three or four blocks to make a little lean to area. Okay, but this is our new suspended bridge. Um, I did this by putting scaffolding underneath. And so you come down here so you can walk around under here and put the blocks above your head. If you don't, oh, and I, I could use scaffolding, but I don't have any bamboo, like real scaffolding. Um, need to fish more. And so we need to clean this up so we can look at our bridge in all of its glory. So I will get out the shovel and oh, my dirt spoon and clean this up and we'll be right back. All cleaned up. So much better. So there is our pseudo suspended path between the two mountains and we made it blend in. It's the same pattern of blocks that we did for the path going up the hill. It's just the spruce and oak interspersed, including spruce and oak fences. And then we just added some lanterns for lighting. Okay, let's talk a little bit about planning. Uh, I am going to, that's just cobblestones. Let's get rid of this. We're going to build a very small, uh, small on the first floor workshop right here as we come off the bridge. I originally had it over here, uh, but the bridge layout worked better with it this way. So all I'm going to do is lay out a foundation in cobblestone and I'm not making it too terribly complicated or fancy. We're probably going to have this stick out over the edge a little bit. Our theme, and I, maybe I haven't talked about this yet. Our theme for our build here is going to be kind of fantastical fantasy slash fairy flower forest. So our buildings are going to be um, a little bit fantasy, a little bit medieval fantasy, but I'm going to try to lean more towards uh, mystical steampunk ish. Well, all I've done here is just lay out a pretty random bottom floor layout. Um, the materials that we're going to use for our base, I've mentioned they're already in the bridge, but our main materials are going to be spruce in terms of the structure of the building. And so what I'll do for each of these floors is decide how many levels we want to go up. And in this case, probably for a workshop of this size, three or four blocks is a good height for the ground floor. When we get to the point where we want to make the second floor, we're going to want to pop that out a little bit. And so in places along the, oops, in places along uh, the foundation, we're going to go out and then up by a couple of blocks so that our next floor will be popped out from the first floor. And let me build this up a little bit and show you. Um, planning is so important, I think, to get a good feel for what something's gonna look like. And I've just done this in cobblestone. I'll replace all of that or most of that with the actual building materials, but this helps me get an idea of what this is gonna look like uh, once everything is done. And so I can, decide where to place windows and doors and walls, etc., uh, by doing a little bit of planning. We're gonna do the same thing for our main base. So let's run up the hill on our new path. Whee! You'll notice I left little, like I like it like there's rope in places and not just wood. And we'll have to decide where good places to come up around where I'm going to build the workshop. So the main base is going to be very, something very similar. Um, we'll think about where we might want entrances and I don't, I'm gonna, I normally I would build, let me talk about this real quick. Normally I would build in a grid. So I would make, put one block down and then every three blocks, I would put another placeholder and then my entire build would be a grid. Uh, this, in this case, it would be a five by five. 
So one, two, three, three blocks with two on either end. Um, or I might choose, depending on the landscape, I might decide, oh, I'm gonna leave five or seven blocks in between. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So because this is kind of seven blocks wide, I might say, okay, well that wall is gonna be seven blocks long. Building in odd numbers in Minecraft, uh, it actually makes your roofs easier and makes it balancing easier. For this build, however, we're trying something different because I want to challenge myself as a builder. And so I'm gonna build one of the most random bases. I'm still gonna try to follow the landscape, but I'm gonna try to make what we're building interesting. I'm, I can't get away from my pattern sometimes. I really do like building in odd numbers. <laughs> <laughs> um, this will definitely make uh, the build challenging, I think, which I'm looking forward to quite a bit. It also will lend itself to a little bit of whimsy, so the walls won't be quite even. Um, it'll look as if it were crafted, hopefully, crafted by something a little bit magical. So this... This is it. This is how we're going to do it. There might even be places for secret rooms. All kinds of stuff. That's it. I declare the outline of our base done. So let's hop up in the air. I know this is like a Minecraft thing we all do. This actually gives us a great... Okay, I might line up some of this. This is a little bit too organic, maybe? So I might clean up some of these edges. I don't know, we'll see. So it's basically gonna be one big building up here and then as we need more buildings for other things, we will add them. Oh, look at that beautiful sunset. Okay, let me hop down from here and next up, I think we should go play with some bees after we take a nap. Okay, be fun. So here is the nearest hive. So what we wanna do is take a pair of shears and get the honeycomb. But before we do that, not only is there a bee there, hi bee. Before we do that, we wanna do two things. One, we wanna check and make sure the hive is full of honey. So if we go to F3, over on the right hand side of the screen under the targeted block section, third line down, you'll see that honey level says five. That is good. Honey level can be zero to five. Five means the hive is full. A uh, bee nest, pardon me. Uh, the non-created ones, the ones that naturally spawn are called nests. So the bee nest is full. However, we don't wanna make the bees mad. And so, as you might imagine, or we know, oh, look at that honey. I'm gonna do it two blocks down. I think you can also do it the block right above. We put a campfire underneath to smoke the bees, to calm them down. Oh, look, a tree grew up. Let's we'll fix that. And fingers crossed I don't make any bees mad. Oh, three honeycomb! <laughs> yeah, okay. So we might, uh, I guess we might leave that. I don't know if we can leave the campfire there. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll science it. Honey level one. Okay, it's already filling back up with good stuff. Okay, let's go make a let's go make a bee nest. Oh, I'm so excited. And we might put the bee nest down here next to this camp. I think we can always move it with uh, silk touch. Beehive. Beehive. Oh, this is so exciting. Mm, okay, and I've changed my mind. I'm gonna put it over here next to our garden where the other bees are. And hopefully, maybe even breed a bee. I don't know if they work in a tree or on the ground. Let's, uh, let's stick it in the tree for now. Sure. Awesome. 
There's one bee. Where's your friend? I want to make baby bees. We want to make another bee. How can there only be one of you? Here, bee. Hello, bee. Okay, well, we'll have to wait all offline when I'm around here farming and picking stuff up. Um, if I have both bees out at the same time, I'll make more bees and they should populate the new beehive all on their own. So exciting. They help us in the garden too. They pollinate all the farm plants and help them grow faster, which is great. Okay. Um, I think that's it in terms of playing with the bees and doing a little cleanup around the base. Next up, I'm gonna work on the storage area behind me, hollow out the hill a little bit and move all of our supplies into a somewhat more organized arrangement. And when I'm done, I'll be back for some show and tell. And we're back and it's time for some show and tell. So I have made a little lean to slash workshop. I'll call this the starter workshop and storage area which is actually a great way for me to get an idea of how many resources we really do have. So I can tell whether or not I'm in a position uh, where I'm ready to build. Cause I, nothing worse than being in the middle of building and be like, Oh, I ran out of trees. That, that would be terrible. I also, while I was up here, uh, made a little, excuse me, awkward at fiving like we do. Here we go. Made a little shanty for my bed little lean-to camp area so that I'm less likely to get eaten by zombies in the middle of the night while I'm sleeping. That seems bad. And just the start of a little bitty path that's eventually going to go up and connect to the new base somehow. Somehow. We'll take a quick look at our supplies. And for anyone who didn't notice, I did use our little magic grow a giant tree trick on the tree where our bed originally was and uh, it worked out great. I actually added just some stairs and fences to kind of make it a little bit more full. I did fill out the leaves in the back too. It kind of grew up flat or so. Okay, so one of the advantages to the new blocks in 1.15, well in 1.14 as well, these barrels are amazing. So it's like hidden storage in your builds. So basically we've got, I think we're in okay shape for wood. Um, I will do it. We're terrible shape for cobble. Uh, stone, meh. I've been cooking all the cobble. That's why we don't have any cobble because it's all stone. I think that's okay. Bling, not great, but we need an enchanting table. And that's why we've been working on growing animals, etc. Crafted items. We do have lots of saddles from my fishing, which is wonderful. Uh, I've started making some glass because we'll need that for the build. Food, we're in great shape. Not going to starve anytime soon. Um, got plenty of sugar cane working on the leather for an enchanting table. And of course, we're in a flower forest, so we have flower storage. There's also doubled storage behind each of these. So it's overflow for the barrel since the barrel is just one chest worth. And then I love the campfire, kind of add a little ambiance. We have all of the blocks, a smoker, a furnace, and a blast furnace. I've put hoppers under them, so no matter what we put in them, they get fed out into an output chest. And I have made one last thing as we wrap up, because Winnie's favorite color is orange. And we have a little shelf in our bedroom area to put a cute tulip on in a flower pot. And I think with that, uh, we're gonna call it a day for the episode. Next time, base building extravaganza. Thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please click the like button. If you'd like to keep up with what's going on the channel, please hit the subscribe and notification bell. And in the meantime, remember, you are the shiny stuff that awesome is made of. Take care, bye-bye.